Yeah, we're focused on three main areas and we, um, we're purely a B2B play. So we don't invent games. We are purely looking to partner with pre-existing audiences. Um, there's a reason we called it Plucky. It, it has the word luck in it, but it's also a friendly, it's a, it's a friendly application. It's a name that's hard to like, yeah. not remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I had to, we had to, had to go over to the US to, to get it. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice name. We like, we like it. So we're giving the, what we call chairman or the initiator of the group bet to pay out to the biggest loser that week. It, it's more fun and it keeps the whole group engaged and logging in, which, you know, is obviously what our partners with the audience are, are most interested in. Speaking from experience, it's as difficult to, to pick a lot of losers as it is to pick a lot of <laughs> winners. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Sports Betting Conversations. Today, we're joined by Sebastian Lewis, CEO at Plucky. Uh, Sebastian, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, my background isn't in uh, necessarily in, in gaming or, or betting. I started out in equity derivatives trading uh, in the city in London uh, back in 2005. Um, worked my way up there into a trading position, mainly focused on sort of improving um, efficiency through technology, whilst I'm not a developer. Um, and sort of saw the way the markets were heading in terms of being pretty uh, computer driven and then moved into the tech and sort of burgeoning uh, startup space in in London in 2011, started my first tech company um, and yeah, have been sort of surfing the sort of startup wave in London since then, started various companies. Today I'm involved in, in four uh, one is um, uh, sells so is a reseller of phone numbers for use with WhatsApp business, both in the UK and the US, and and growing pretty quickly. Um, I'm involved in a restaurant group. Um, also uh, started a travel startup called Just Who It, and yeah, latterly um, being involved in the um, the creation of Plucky.com. That's quite a diverse portfolio <laughs> yeah, i won't ask a, you to play favorites so <laughs> yeah no i won't it's uh it's it's a poor f- I, yeah i mean i like visiting the restaurants but um the uh it, it is a portfolio approach if, if i'm honest um you know that being involved in startups is is up and down the success rates aren't any better than they've ever been so um you put a lot of energy into these things and yeah, I, I've taken a, a portfolio approach rather than a rather than a single business. Yeah. So tell us about Plucky. Uh, um, what, what does Plucky do? Yeah. So um, an ex colleague of mine in the city um, who sort of taught me how to trade futures and spread and, and spread bets, and we were kind of sort of early users on Betfair Exchange um, in the UK. He was a big sports fan and had been playing fantasy Premier League that we have um, in the UK. I mean, it's played all around the world, around 13 million players, I think, last year. Um, And always playing for money with a group of friends, about 20 friends all in one league. And they were picking their players and and, uh, sort of betting against each other. But there wasn't a mechanism to pull that money efficiently, um, base it around actual kind of game events. Um, and, you know, like these things are with friends, it's often hard to chase money and somebody pays, somebody doesn't. Um, how do you manage the payouts? So he was really interested in kind of using our experience in te- technology to understand if we could pull money from a group of friends in a chat room and connect that to the API of the game that they may be playing and to manage payouts based on events happening in the game. So. We kind of started in 2021, kicking around a concept application, um, testing and learning, and then it quickly became obvious that we were kind of getting ourselves involved in what in the UK we call sweepstakes, which is, you know, pooling money in a room where you're either backing yourself or you're taking a random pick. And um, we got our license in 2022. And up until about six months ago, purely testing and learning on, on various games and events. But I guess now we're sort of solely focused on three areas. One is 
um, monetizing free-to-play games, fantasy games, where you want to wager against your friends. Um, traditional, again, what we call sweepstakes, but I, I know the language in, in the US can be different. Um, but for example, a television show, um, a big horse race, where you don't have a skill-based element, you just want a random pick, and it's fun that you all might put $10 in, £10 in, and um, the winner takes takes the pot. And then also, I guess the same technology can be applied to competitive socialising. If you're in a room and you're playing a skill-based game, whether that's um, darts in a, in a bar or a temp in bowling alley, um, you might want to play for money. And again, you want to pull that money together and, and you want it to pay out based on uh, things that are happening on the television. So, yeah, we're focused on three main areas and we, um, we're we purely a B2B play. So we don't invent games. We are purely looking to partner with pre-existing audiences in pre-existing games where we monetize um, fans in a secure, you know, regulated um, fun environment. Um, there's a reason we called it plucky. It, it has the word luck in it, but it's also a friendly, it's a, it's a friendly application. Um, it's tailored for, for everyone, not just your typical kind of male sports fan. Yeah. And the, the name is, I don't want to say sticky, but it, it, it's a name that's hard to like, yeah. not remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah I had to, we had to, had to go over to the US to, to get it. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a nice name. We like, we like it. Yeah. And um, what sports like do you focus on? Yeah, look, we can monetize any, any event. Um, as I said, in terms of kind of traditional sweepstakes, we do television shows. Um, we do any sports events. We've now started looking at esports. It, it was natural for us to be kind of or start life in in football, soccer here in the in the UK um, because that's where the audience is. To be, to be honest with you, um, but for example, you know we're looking at um, competitive socialising in bars um, in the UK where you're playing cricket in 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 nets. So yeah, we can. We can um, run the technology on any sport, um, any event, but yeah, I think football is 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 it was obviously the clear winner to begin with. Yeah, yeah. And, and are you focused um, currently just on the European market, or are you have plans to for the US? Yeah, so we regulated. You know, we were new to to, to gambling, like I say. Um, so it's been a steep learning curve um, with mm -hmm. lots of kind of ups and downs, and we got our UK regulation in. 22 and we've just got our irish betting license um but I, I, you know we're, we're going to go wherever the audience is um so just as we're trying to understand where our partners rights holders um where the audience is i think our licensing will will follow yeah yeah makes sense and and you know just uh you know working with uh, sports betting clients for for many years so you mentioned betfair earlier um the and your your uh, use of their exchange product, uh, that's something that data are built for Betfair years ago. So it's oh, wow. kind of interesting. Yeah. So that's uh, so ho hopefully had a good experience, but but that that's something that we put together for Betfair many years ago, and um, uh, their uh, specifically their white label solution. Um, so yeah, we know that uh, part of the market really really well. Um, yeah, it's a great, I mean, it's a great product. I mean, I'm a natural, I'm a natural layer than I am a backer. So it's, you know, it, it suits me. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, it's interesting. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm more focused on the United States than the rest of the world. And, you know, that really hasn't caught on here yet, which is qu quite interesting since people do participate as, as I'm sure you know in a lot of these fantasy football leagues whether it's something on the DraftKings or the fan duels but even you know personal ones right that they arrange through like a Yahoo or a CBS sports site um same with uh, kind of a a sweepstakes and uh where you know you just kind of throw money in to a pod based on you know, some random selection of like who will garner the most, let's say, fantasy points in the NFL. This, so we do have those concept, uh, concepts, but they're not as well um, 
managed as, as how you're describing your platform, which is fantastic. Yeah, we, yeah, and, and one of the areas we were, I, kind of, I guess, focused on was was our own, you know, my, my co-founder, Ian Brannigan, um, whose, whose idea this is, you know, he, he wasn't very good in his league. <laughs> you know, every year he was one of the losers. Um, and what you see with these fantasy games is huge engagement in the first four game weeks. And then here in the UK, we have um, 38 game weeks in the Premier League. And, you know, the engagement's dropping off as you're getting worse and, you know, you're not accumulating points. Yeah. So what's nice about having money on it, um, not just for season long, but for, for weekly bets and also monthly, is we're giving the what we call chairman or the initiator of the group bet to pay out to the biggest loser that week. Um, you know, it's it's fun. It's um it's it's interesting when other people are winning as well as the winner. You know, it's not about don't pay the winner. Of course, the winner who's the best should win, but why don't we put a percentage of the total group funds to the person who benched the most points? Um, you know, the most red cards. Um, yeah. it's it's it, it's more fun and it keeps the whole group engaged and logging in, which you know is obviously what our partners with the audience are, are most interested in. Well, speaking from experience, it's as difficult to to pick a lot of losers as it is to pick a lot of <laughs> winners. Uh, yeah, I mean for Ian's for Ian's case, uh, yeah, he's been consistently a loser for fifteen years. So, uh, yeah, That's a skill as well. I mean, I can relate to that. <laughs> he, he, he would say that. <laughs> yeah. You. yeah, excellent. Um, so, uh, uh, in, in terms of um, like sweepstakes is kind of an interesting topic and it's something that I haven't heard about for decades. And then all of a sudden I'm hearing about it more lately, which to me was a little bit shocking that I heard that word uh, just recently. Um, why do you think like that type of, um, I guess, I don't know, opportunity to win something is, is making, uh, I don't know if it, if it ever went away completely, but why is it more prevalent now than has been in you know, recent decades? Because like back in the day, you know, you had these like mail-in sweepstakes, like, I mean, I don't want to age myself, but going back to like the 70s and 80s, uh, when I was a little boy, uh, <laughs> you know, you had to like fill something out, send it in, and then you just wait, you know, to get that letter that said, yeah. you know, thanks, try again. Well, why why is that type of engagement, uh, why, do you, why do you think it's uh, coming back? Yeah, I think there's a couple of theories. I mean, one, the media has obviously, you know, massively changed in terms of the way people are consuming it and what they're consuming. So, for example, um, I don't want to be too UK focused, but I can only go off, you know, kind of our first early markets. You know, we're, we have huge audiences watching television programs where it, all of the players in that television program are, it's, um, you know, they're, they're members of the public. You don't know who they are before they enter the television show. And to get a random pick um, makes watching the program throughout the season more fun. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of programs like that. We we have a huge, um, I mean, it's just getting massive. The uh, We have a Eurovision Song Contest here in Europe and, you know, the, know we have Eurovision. <laughs> yeah, we have we have Eurovision song parties, um, and everybody picks a country, and you all bring food to the to the house, and and you watch the television program over the night, and everybody votes, and and again, um, when there's money on it, it's 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 more interesting, it's more fun, it, there's there's more stuff to laugh about because you know somebody in the room got the worst country. So, I, I think sort of consumption of, of media has has kind of changed. I think as well that, you know, whilst you and I have fixed odds um, betters, we're seeing a lot of people come in to the to the plucky database that don't necessarily immediately understand fixed odds. We see huge amounts of advertising here in the UK, and obviously the market's pretty saturated for fixed odds betting. Yeah. But, you know, not a lot of people understand four to eight or 10 to one. Um, and actually an entry level, um, do you want to put 10 pounds on it and you just get one pick? The un, you know, understanding that is, is, is quite simple. Um, so I think for a brand like Plucky, it's kind of all inclusive and you don't need to understand fixed odds. 
I don't think a lot of the ads that talk to um, some of the betting market in the UK necessarily talk to plucky customers. But it's, you know, if you have £10 on your fantasy team or £10 on the Eurovision Song Contest, you know, then being shown um, the sort of next stage um, skill game bet and then fixed odds bet, it's kind of a journey. But I, I, I just think that, you know, we take for granted, certainly with kind of younger generations, that they understand fixed odds. You know, that, mm -hmm. um, yeah. they, they kind of don't. So um, I'm sure there are other reasons, but I think there's a couple of observations that I've seen sort of in the last 12 months. Yeah, so it, it sounds like, um, you know, you're kind of opening the door wide for like casual people to participate in the gambling type of activities, which not something that like like the Eurovision contest, uh, you know, um, uh, example that you gave, uh, you know, there's like no pressure, no stress. It's it's more of a kind of a social thing than like, oh, you know, I really hope that uh you know Salah's gonna score you know a goal this game so I can you know cash in on my par <laughs> yeah well what you know and that's something we're kind of looking at is in the future you know on the basis that we know your fantasy picks um and you drop Salah that weekend you might want to hedge um your position by being shown a fixed odds bet you might not necessarily understand the mechanics but when someone says you know for another 10 pounds if Salah does score you can win 30 and that offsets the loss that you may have made in your fantasy um, pool bet, then, you know, that's, again, it, it's it's a basic explanation and, and understandable um, for people. I think as well that there is a huge audience in competitive socialising. And, you know, if you're playing a round of golf, um, again, you might not necessarily have all of the fixed odds applications here in the UK, but you'd want to play for money um, every weekend in the same crowd with your friends and and just let an application do that for you. So, you know, it's casual, but it, it's pretty regular. Yeah. 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 I, I've heard of some um, startups that kind of focus just on, on golf and they want to create like this cool thing, but you, you really need something like super intuitive. Right. I mean, uh, and kind of fun to interact with and uh, you know, the, um, the startups that I've spoken to who do have that concept that kind of try to go a little bit too far, which which makes it more of a chore than, you know, enjoyment, especially when you're yeah, playing, I think the mistake, playing at the same time. <laughs> exactly. The mistake is trying to invent a game when the game is already happening on the fairway, you know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, Good way to say it, yeah. Yeah, let the, game, let the game carry on, just provide the monetization side of it. So we were, you know, we, we've stayed pretty focused around you know, just provide very quick pooling of money amongst friends in, in places that they would naturally do it. So, for example, here in the UK, you know, everybody has WhatsApp um, and there's huge WhatsApp groups for different things, whether in your golf group or, um, you know, watching a television show or playing fantasy, um, you know, the the spreading of a pool bet through those is you know, just trying try to live in the areas that people are already communicating and trying to not make it too complicated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Um, just to kind of switch gears slightly, um, in, in terms of technology, um, um, how did you go about kind of selecting your technical stack? I mean, or was it you or did you put a team together to do it? Like, what, what was your process there? Yeah, so I'm not a developer, as I say. Um, yeah. the, the way we kind of try and spin up concepts is to really test, test and learn, test and learn, test and learn before we get too deep into certainly making choices around native apps. So today, Plucky exists as a web application only. Um, mm -hmm. Tech stack is, you know, Amazon Web Servers, all the things you would expect. Um, yeah. But... Yeah, we still feel like there's a lot to learn in regards to kind of our three verticals before, mm -hmm. and we like we get the fact that push notifications and and advantages to native apps are going to be key for us, but we kind of want to get that brief right before we, um, yeah, before we heavily invest in, in native. Yeah, 
Uh, that, that makes complete sense. Um, yes, and, and it's an approach that you know at Data Art, like we recommend, right? Because if you're kind of like going all all in based on even if you did your market research, there are still some assumptions, right, that are taken into consideration when you you provide a product with with specific features. So just having like something out there for people to dip their you know toes in and giving you. I hope some valuable feedback um, that you can actually form uh, a product that will appeal to the masses. Yeah, and I think unlike other experiences I've had in other tech companies, I have, and I think that's why, you know, Plucky has taken a while to get to market. It's just, it's not been plain sailing around implementing payment service providers implementing banks, implementing uh, KYC operators. When you're a startup, it's it's tough. You know, um, I've been building businesses on Stripe. And as soon as I entered the gambling space, you know, it's just not something you can do. So right. it, it's, it's made the technical development slower. I mean, we're implementing open banking technology at the moment, and that feels like a real step forward. But Two years ago, had we applied for open banking, you know, there's just no way we would have been close to getting an acquiring bank. So yeah. now that we have proper partners and big audiences and, and we're processing, it, it's getting easier. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's tough to kind of make decisions on technology on day one because um, getting past due diligence and as a startup is just super tough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely and regulations also play a big role into what you can yeah. can't use and how it's used and where it's used so there's a lot of factors yeah, to yeah. consider yeah. yeah uh well sebastian this has been super informative i uh, really appreciate your time and all the information that you and details you gave us about you know plucky sounds really exciting i hope it comes to the u.s and in your future but i will definitely uh use it when I'm out in uh, London next time, hopefully soon. <laughs> Great. Uh, thanks, Russell. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for your time. I appreciate it.